going well. But uh, they just go out of the bottom of it, and they haven't been able to find a way to have a government strong enough to stop the desertions. That's what Taylor told us this morning. Uh, I don't know quite how to approach this, Mike, as so far as the Congress is concerned, uh, before we make up our mind. When we take it much further than you and McCormick, uh, you know what I get into with the discussions and uh, so forth. On the other hand, while Taylor's here and before he goes back, if we thought that uh, we could get any uh, help or any advice that we could follow that we think would be worthy, I'd like to, uh, I don't know whether they want to be exposed to him, uh, but I'd like to be exposed to their uh, thinking, their judgments. Uh, do you have any feeling it would be better to just let him go up before uh, uh, foreign relations and armed services, or would it be better just to have some of the representative ones of them here? You've got every conflict in the world from uh, you to Russell Long and from uh, uh, Mendel Rivers to uh, uh, Doc Morgan. And uh, in our own party, it's pretty well, uh, it's pretty well divided. Do you have any thinking about what would be the wisest thing to do there? If you're going to see anybody, you ought to see them all. And uh, that is on those uh, You mean that? <coughs> yes. And there's no reason why they can't be jointly <coughs> to discuss the situation. And maybe uh, some good would come out of it, but if you start picking out a selected few, then I think you're asking for trouble because others will feel they've been left out and. Uh, They'll get grumpy, to put it mildly. Uh, would that be, would your thought then be that it would be best to have, a, to ask uh, Russell and Fulbright to have a joint hearing with him and uh, do the same on the House side? And uh, we'll have this all in the papers then. Well, if you, if you see a few, it's going to get in the papers. I mean, how could you pick out the three or four or five and not expect it to leak? Well, we do reasonably well with these leadership meetings. Well, or, uh, don't you, what I mean, your judgment, you can see it better than I do. Do you think they leak much? Uh, not the leadership meetings, but the, uh, I mean the meetings do. Or I mean the joint ones like we had on the Dominican Republic the other night. No, no. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. Very good, very good. Uh, Dirksen and Hickenlooper and Aiken are good, and uh, of course I don't know. It may may be uh, may be the thing we want to do is let me talk to McCormick. Maybe the thing we want, and then I'll I'll see what happens here tomorrow and the next day. He's going back about Saturday Sunday. Oh, and. Do you have any feeling about Taylor uh, coming out? Isn't that going to be a little uh, difficult for us? Oh, uh, it'll be a little difficult. I have more feeling about Lodge going in, to tell you the truth, because I don't think there's any comparison between the two. And Lodge is not well loved on the hill. No, but he is... Uh, and he's tied in somewhere with CM. That was the big mistake. They like him better out there than anybody we've had, number one. And number two, my people tell me that he is less likely to get us in an Asian war than Taylor. That he is much more flexible and he does not, uh, he does not, well, politically, and he does not, uh, he likes to talk it out rather than fight it out. Well, and that's pretty appealing these days. <laughs> And he's experienced, and he has the language, and they like him. And he gets along pretty well with the Catholics, pretty along with the Buddhists. And to start all over with a new man is pretty rough. That's true. That's true. Sir? It has to be done, I guess. No, it doesn't. We can do anything that looks better. No, I don't We've had Rusk and McNamara and Bobby Kennedy and all of them offer to go and Mac Bundy, but I don't believe any of them are in either Lodge's or Taylor's class. Uh, I believe we have more militarism under Taylor, although he is a mild man and is not a militarist himself. 
I believe that he feels he would vote with them more than Lodge. Lodge is one that goes this economic stuff, you know, that Bill's talking all the time. And of course, uh, I gathered, I thought maybe Aiken was against us a little bit because he didn't like Lodge. Uh, did that have something to do with his feeling, you think? Uh -huh. He doesn't like Lodge. Fulbright kept shoving Lodge the other night and arguing with me on it and demanding we kind of do it, and I kind of indicated, all right, we'll try some of this if you want us to, and uh, I could see Aiken kind of not liking it. No, he doesn't like Lodge. It runs pretty deep, too. Before I let you go, you think about it. Don't talk to anybody, but just give your best thoughts, and we'll talk tomorrow. Let me ask you this. Uh, uh, are you going to have a good deal of trouble with our, my McKee bill that yes, allows sir. him to be a Federal Aviation Administrator? Yes, sir. Uh, that's, do, you, do you think it, uh, it's in danger? No, I don't, but I think that... Uh, Is anything we can do to let them know uh, the, the, the difficulties we have and the facts? I'm just afraid, Mike, to turn over a billion-dollar program to a person without any experience, and the only people that build airplanes in this country are military people. Yeah. I can't... Uh and when, they, when we started checking up, uh, uh, the, the Dillon was scared, McNamara was scared, Commerce was scared, and they have to serve on this committee as a board of directors, and we put hundreds of millions of dollars in a plane going 2,250 miles an hour. And the French and the British are way out in front of us, and we've got to utilize the know-how we have in the Air Force if we're to build it at all. And I just can't take a school teacher or a lawyer or a banker to do this. I've got to have a man that's been doing it. McKee's been doing it all of his life and handled hundreds of millions. I talked to Vance Hartke. They told me he was against it. He didn't have any real reason. He just said, well, they'd been again. They put in the act in 58. They didn't want a military man. I said, yes, I think it, that's true. I don't see the real wisdom of it, but if Congress wants it, that's I don't object to it. But in this instance, uh, I, I need this man, and I, I wish they would make an, one exception. He always said, you're not going to have any trouble, uh, just kind of flighty. He didn't. Uh, he just said he's against it, but uh, you're not going to have any trouble. You've got all the votes and so on and so forth. But I understand from some of the other senators that uh, John Williams is worked up because the military is in several departments, and that he doesn't like it. And the military is one of our best sources of, uh, of competent, honest people. We just don't have people that want to give up uh, these big jobs and, and come in and, uh, and work for 25,000, 30,000 a year. There's just not many of them want to come into Washington and turn themselves over to John Williams. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, sir? He's digging. Yes. Uh, it looks like to me, though, a fellow that is prudent and careful and, and methodical and hell-raising as he is would want a man with good background and experience. He's not a social worker. He's not a political, democratic uh, political person. He's selected just purely because the Secretary of Treasury and Commerce and Defense think that he's the best equipped. I don't know what party he belongs to. Uh, well, I think we have to just uh, be sent to something here that uh, can be used. I think he's trying to find out the number of other military men in the same position who are getting their pensions and working for the government being allowed to do so. Uh, I don't think it runs very deep. I could be mistaken, but he just got onto this a couple of days ago, and he's been doing some digging. And then you've got uh, Pearson, who won't say much, Young, who wants a roll call vote on it, may say a little something, Hartke, who you don't know where he stands half the time, and Monroe, and he was all out for him. I promised uh, uh, Mike I'd try and bring it up today. I tried to uh, work out a limitation with some of these people who were opposed to him, and they wouldn't do it. Well, I said, if that's the case, then we won't bring it up until we're through with this aid bill, because I'm not setting aside, uh, setting aside the aid bill until, unless we can get something in the way of a time limitation to consider other matters. Mm -hmm. There's too much trouble on this bill. 
Uh, are you are you in danger any on your aid bill? I don't think so, sir. But uh, uh, it hasn't started uh, yet. So far, we've been lucky, and uh, I think our luck will hold. But uh, you can't tell when something will happen. Is there anything you think I could do? I talked to Hartkey on the McKee thing to explain to him why, and I guess it'd do no good to talk to William. No, no good to talk to William. Hartkey is the weakest link in the chain anyway, so... Who? Just talk. Is Pearson of Kansas against it, you say? Yeah, but he won't say much. And who else is against it besides Pearson and Hartkey and William? Young. Uh, Steve Young? Yeah. He came around and said he wanted a roll call vote. And uh, there must be others who aren't saying anything, just waiting. Do you know how Dirksen is? No, but I imagine uh, everyone would come along. I'll inquire tomorrow. Do you have any feelings on the Dominican that you haven't told me about? No, I... <coughs> the, the, the Dominican is the least of my troubles. Yes, it is. Me too. I just thought while I was talking that I'd... Uh, the only thing is, I think that it might be well, if you can, to get on the side of the angels, and uh, the angels would be either Balaguer or Bosch. Uh, and uh, if you could uh, uh, restore the government, uh, under which this guy was elected, and uh, see if you can't work out something on that basis pending the next elections. Marsh says he will not go back. I think it'd be a terrible mistake for him to go back because his people are real. Uh, the people around him that are taking him over are bad people, Mike. What about Balaguer? Uh, he won't take it. He, he wants to run, I think, and I, they tell me our people made a poll there before this happened, two or three weeks before it happened. Sometime before it happened, I'm not sure, it might have been two or three months. It showed him about 60-odd percent and Barsh 30. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't want, no one wants the provisional government. Uh, they're talking about a boy, a fellow named Garcia Cadoy, who was in Barsh's cabinet and Balaguer's cabinet, and might be acceptable to both of them for a provisional government. Uh, Camano uh, and uh, Imbert uh, out of the country. No, I don't think you. I don't think you get either of them out. And the main thing, uh, they are not the worst ones. The main thing is you can get these hardcore communists out. That's what really broke up our deal. They got five thousand in the three parties. They got about a hundred real highly trained hardcore leaders. They fade in and fade out. When they need to, they come up to the top and they stick their head above the water and they stir up everything. Then they fade out. Then they come back. They, they do that in and out all the time and they, they pretty well have Barsh's ear and pretty well uh, uh, give them directions. We watch everything they do and needless to say, we listen and hear and see everything they do and we, we're pretty good control of it. But they use, uh, they, they use uh, some of the papers on us you got people that are reporters down there that are coming in here that are telling Bosch and others they're going to lobby for him. And then they come down here representing the, some of the big papers, take positions. And uh, they have been, uh, have been very misled. Poor fellows don't know it. You can't, I can't tell them. But uh, Herbert Matthews at the time is uh, calling the signals on Latin America. He, he was in here 90 days ago. He thinks that you ought to have a Castro operation in every government hemisphere. And uh, he's got Tad Shields down there covering him. He's getting ready to go to Spain now. And he uh, he had us shooting in the other forces, siding with the generals and all that, when it just wasn't plain, wasn't true. And the networks pretty well have the same problem. I have told them, and they've been a little more careful with it, but I've told them some of the things in the Missouri, but the other night they had us, uh, when the Brazilian general arrived, they gave him a salute. It was the airport 10 miles, San Isidro. 
and they had it on their prime time show, and the boy uh, 